Well, we are excited to welcome a new guest to the Daytime Kitchen. We have Shawanda Marie. Welcome to Thank the show. You. Thank you so much. And you wrote to me uh, telling me a little bit about your story, and I said, we have got to get this woman <laughs> on the show. Oh. You are a culinary storyteller, right? Y yes. What is that? Well, um, the story of every culture is in their food. Yeah. So, you know, New Orleans and Louisiana in particular has a very rich history and culture. Uh huh. And so, no better way to explain that than through food. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Okay, so you're from New Orleans area. Yes. And you are you do Creole, right? Yes. Now, Creole is a is a culture. Is that right? Creole is a culture. Okay. Creole, Creole is a language, a people, a culture. It's Creole history, the earrings I have on are Creole earrings. Yeah, I was watching your YouTube um, channel just a little bit, and you were uh -huh. talking about the Creole earrings. Yes. And they're, it's something that's a tradition that's passed down from generation to generation. Yes. I always thought Creole was a dish. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's cooking, right? Well, yeah, Creole is a dish. Mm -hmm. um, Creole basically is the culture that developed in the Louisiana Territory prior to uh, the Louisiana Purchase. So it's a mix of all the people that settled in the area that brought whatever they had brought from their old country to uh -huh. the new country and contributed to the culture, the food, the music, the language. Neat, yes, neat. yes. And so you're trying to keep this story alive yes. with something called the New Orleans Creole Story Pot. Yes. Tell me about that. New Orleans Creole Story Pot is an experience. Um, it's a culinary experience. It's a historical and cultural experience. I provide um, dining uh, services oh. um, and also public speaking uh -huh. um, for people that are interested in tasting New Orleans here in Southwest Virginia or anywhere actually. Uh -huh. um, so I bring a slice of New Orleans to people's dinner table or home. Um, I have cooking classes. I've had cooking parties where people can actually learn how to prepare Creole uh -huh. food. Um, yeah, and it's, it's just fun. I work with kids. Sometimes I'll dress up in uh, attire, uh -huh. Creole attire, period yeah. attire. Do you I, think it's like a, something that's dying off, you know, this, this culture that people don't really know about? I think it's very much alive. It has never really died off. Uh -huh. it's, it's there, but people really don't know it to uh, be able to identify it. Oh, okay, uh, interesting. It, yeah, they don't know it to be, uh, be able to identify it, but it's very strong. The language is endangered, so I'm working oh. to incorporate some uh, aspects of the language into what I do as well. That's so cool. I love that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to learn much more from Shawanda coming up. And you can find out more at creolestorypot.com. And you're going to share a recipe with us, aren't you? Yes. All right. It's gumbo, right? Yes, we're uh, making filet gumbo. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. <laughs>
And Ooh. rules come in different colors. They do. Different colors, de depending on how you want your 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 dish to taste huh. and to look. So okay. All right. For time's up. sake, mm -hmm. we get that all cooked in. Right. And together, and then what do we put our our proteins in here? Then you add yeah. Then you add your proteins. You add your your sausage and your shrimp, and mm -hmm. you know you would add everything to it. Um, but you would also add a stock. You would make a stock out of shrimp or, okay. some, or some type of seafood. Mm -hmm. You would add your shrimp. This is just for time's sake, of course. Yeah, <laughs> right. Gumbo tastes a lot longer to make than... Right, yeah. <laughs> do you want to plate it up so we can see what it looks like? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I'll mm -hmm. go ahead and plate this up. And how much does this usually serve once you get everything together? Oh, goodness. It can serve a whole family and friends and your neighbors down the street, too. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's normally what happens when somebody yeah. makes gumbo. You know, everybody comes over when it's, when it's <laughs> when gumbo, gumbo time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you start off with some rice in there. You start off with your rice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then once you do your rice, you go ahead on and grab a ladle and just pull up. Whatever you get is what you get. <laughs> you get what you I get, like you don't that. grow fit. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, man. My grandmother used to tell me, just put the ladle in and pull it up. Don't go picking through my shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Grabbing all my meat. I love it. Oh, man. oh my goodness. And you're gonna share this recipe yes. with our viewers. So if yes. you wanna try it at home, you know, it's, it's not something that's going to make very, very quickly, but it's worth it. Yes. Oh, look at that. That looks so great. Go to our website, you can look for that. Uh, website that oh, recipe and then you can go on to the New Orleans Creole <laughs> story pot what do you think Brittany oh I'm excited about this mm, me too man right. that is so good mm -hmm. all right wow